Hey, Katrina here from Scrappy Horses. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you've not been here before, a very warm welcome. And to those of you who have, welcome back. Today, I'm going to share some uh, steps with you on a vintage style scrapbook page. I did some things a little differently here, and I'm going to try to describe them to you as you're watching the video and sort of catch you up to the steps where we are on the screen. As you can see, I already have something printed out, and this is the back of the page I've printed out. I printed it twice, and this was too large, so I printed it again a little bit smaller. And as I flip this, you'll see the side that I'm going to use. I designed this in Cricut Design Space. Now, those of you who are familiar with Design Space know that this could never be printed in Design Space. You can design it this large, but you cannot print it this large. So what I did is I took a screenshot of it and then moved it over to my notes program on my Mac and I just printed it from there. Um, the paper background is, I believe it's from Polka Doodles. I'll put this in the link below. But um, the tree is actually from Cricut Design Space. Now, I laid it all out first, and then I moved it over to this green paper exactly the way I had laid it out. I just slid it under and pulled it out. Kind of like a magician's trick, right? So that way I would know. Now, another trick I want to share with you is I took a photograph of it with my phone. That way, I had a reference to go back to as I was creating. Sorry to end that sentence with a preposition. I hope no grammar teachers are listening. At this point, building my page, um, I've actually already laid it all out, like I said before. But I'm just sort of putting the pieces back on just to see how they're going to lay again. Make sure I really like it before I start gluing things down. I moved all of this in one large clump. This is not glued together yet. So there are two pieces at the very bottom that are glued together, and that is my mat. And my mat actually, it's a lacy doily piece, and it actually has two pieces. Those have already been adhered, but that's all. Nothing else has been adhered at this point. The first thing I'm going to actually adhere to the layout will be that uh, mat piece, this little doily mat. And you will note that as I adhere it, I'm just going to use my tape runner. I'm going to just put one strip of, of tape right in the, the middle side of it. I'm going to do the same thing with my photo. Now, those are still very movable. I can, I can twist them a little bit, and yes, it might rip the paper underneath, but nobody's ever going to see that. So I have some options. Also, by only taping in the middle, I have the option of doing what I just did. I have the option of layering things between the doily and photo or underneath the doily itself. So here I'm adhering with some uh, double-sided tape. And I will also use fabric tack. Now, the reason I use both is because the fabric tack gives me some wiggle room because the double sided tape really grabs. And again, I have the flexibility to move things around a little bit if I put the fabric tack over it. I've added another piece under the doily because I've decided that that is permanently where I want it and I don't want to put anything underneath that part of this little doily piece. This might be a great time to talk about some of the different pieces of ephemera also that I have included. The family title that I'm going to put up at the top of this page was cut in Cricut Design Space and I um, picked the top part and then I actually used the offset feature in Cricut Design and I uh, cut it again. Then I heat embossed with two different colors of embossing powder. I used black 
and I used a shiny copper color. So how I did this is I just sort of sprinkled the black on, but I didn't coat it completely. Then I brought the copper color in and I finished it, finished covering it with that, shook it off. Then I heated it so that both colors melted together. And you'll see a close up of that later to get an idea of what that looks like. Again, I used fabric tack to apply to the um, family to stick on my page. And I used the two-way uh, zig glue to adhere the grandma and grandpa just because those pieces are so small that I would have had a lot of trouble using the fabric tack. So here I am applying the zig two-way glue to the grandma piece and applying that over the book. I somehow missed filming the flowers, but they were also applied with fabric tack as well as the torn cheesecloth. Now I'm going to apply the metal pieces and I like E6000 uh, for that. I, that's my go-to whenever I apply metal to scrapbook pages. I just put it on the metal and I leave it alone for a few seconds to sort of start to dry and then I stick it on. The key, I want to talk about the key. The key was silver and I decided I wanted it gold like the clock that you see there. And so I painted it with a gold metallic paint and then sprayed it with some um, Bow Benny bronze spray. Again, I'll put it in the box below so you can see exactly what I used for that. Now that little clock um, does have numbers on it and you'll see a close-up of that later. So I wanted to make sure I got that right side up. So that's the reason I was pointing to it. I was actually doing that for myself as I was building the page thinking, okay, the 12 is up. It's all good. Here I'm applying that little piece of ribbon. I'm a sort of gluing that down. And I will also put little ribbon pieces up on the two tags. Sort of frames it out by using the same thing on both corners, but creating a triangle, which helps your eye to sort of move around the piece. This completes my layout. I hope you've enjoyed your time here, and I hope that Maybe I've inspired you to get some old photos out and start creating some pages of your own. Questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and I'll get back to you. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.